October 23, 2023. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This time, our park director, Todd Schaefer, is absent. We have our assistant chief, fire chief, David Schertzer. Right now, um, our police chief is not here. And that's why we got here. We have our zoning inspector, Darren Crivelli. And we have our road superintendent and administrator, Mark Bethelia. We have our fiscal officer, Lori Wolf. Off to my right, we have Trustee Mike Dockery. Off to my left, we have Trustee Robert Santos. And I am Trustee Monica Beavers. At this time, I need a motion to approve minutes of the regular meeting of October 9, 2023. So moved. Second. Mrs. Beaver? Yes. Mr. Santos? Yes. Dockery? Yes. And um, we can hear from our administrator at this time. All right. Um, I don't have anything um, really to report on the administration side, but on the road superintendent side, Country Green is, uh, they, they grounded today, they should be resurfacing it by the end of the week. Um, and Northwest, although not our project, it was the gas company's project, they did receive uh, an email stating that they should be resurfacing it this week. So that should be the conclusion to I know it will be a very lengthy uh, summer project and disruption. Chief, please chief isn't here. I will listen to the picture at this time. I don't have anything for us either. Okay, our zoning department. I would ask the board to approve a nuisance resolution on the highlights for the 505 28 square quality property is a nuisance 2419 Amber Lee. That's 2420 Aspen. Slightly cool, 1150 North Campo Miles Road. Uh, trash and debris. Uh, 4177 Crown Road and Stockade Fence. 1863 Lancaster Drive Trash FedEx. 1650 and 1656 Lori Drive, high grass. Uh, 5360 West Rockwell Road, that's the house that we tore down. A tree and another property fell, so it's on that. Uh, 4422 Washington Lori Drive, junk. And uh, 5465 West Road, junk. So moved. Second. Second. Yes. Attorney Dockery? Yes. Mrs. Beavers? Yes. And then I would ask the board to approve a motion to find the following motor vehicle to meet all the following criteria three model years of older, currently unoperable, and specific damage, including but not limited to any of the following Missy Wills tires, engine, or transmission, and further following vehicles. Public use is on a high school 505871, and will be removal of junk vehicle in 14 days after notice to serve this property on 437 Westgate Boulevard. And then our whole blue Chevrolet pickup truck that expired license plate has been eaten. 2159 parked and exposed manor within the rear portion of the driveway. So moved. Second. Attorney Dockery? Yes. Mrs. Peter? Yes. Mr. Santa? Yes. Mr. Santa? Yes. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. We see our park department is missing. Bob Schaefer, so at this time, we'll have to see our yeah, for uh, up to the All right. Motion to pursue the highway advice code 505 that the fair market value of the personal property items listed below are 2500 or less. And that said items of personal property listed are unneeded, obsolete, or unfit for public use. And that said items can be scrapped. So moved. <coughs> Mrs. Deaver? Yes. Mr. Santos? Yes. Attorney Dockery? Yes. Okay, Jim. Mike. 
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, just a couple of things. Our bot uh, thing is working out very well. We have bot you on Monday. And, uh, a nice group of indoor bot players in the So that's worked out a little pretty well. Uh, I had mentioned last time that we were going to be having a health fair there. Uh, keep you updated on what's happening. It will either be in December or March. So it's really kind of slowly. We had a meeting with people today and uh, they decided which one they want to have it done. <clears throat> and that's big. oh, I did have a I did meet with uh, the county prosecutor and uh, she agreed that she would come to the senior center and do a uh, seminar on senior scams and things like that. Uh, we haven't set a date on that yet, but uh, hopefully it'll be in the near future. So I'm looking forward to that. That's something at this time of the year is very pertinent to seniors because uh, a lot of people try to scam during holiday season thinking they're vulnerable, I guess, but we're not. We're tough. That's about it. Lord, what, our fiscal officer at this time? I am a fiscal officer, but I do not have anything other than my report on there today. All right, I need a motion to approve September report submitted to the board. At the October 9th meeting for A through E. So moved. Second. Mr. Jensen? Yes. Attorney Dobry? Yes. Mr. Dobry? Yes. <clears throat> Receipt of the designated outboard refreshment area door, D O R A. Application for the Patriot Boulevard Area Pursuit ORC 430182. This application be kept on file in the fiscal office and will be made available for inspection during normal business hours. Motion. Uh, so this is the motion. If you guys don't know, a door is basically a designated outdoor refreshment area. I was approached a couple months back by Quaker State Blue and by the Brew House. And they looked and they actually researched some things that they can do to improve the Patriot Boulevard area. So a door basically gives them, or anyone in that area, authorization to get in there, grab a drink with a door um, approved cup, and walk outside. We're obviously going to make sure that the, there's time restraints, there are event restraints. So, like for example, today nothing's going on. They're not going to be able to leave the building with an alcoholic beverage. It's pretty much going to be restricted for events um, that they let us know about and we will approve. Our hopes is that this will bring in other businesses that want to be in that area, kind of like a destination stop, which is right off the highway, which would be good. We've researched other areas that have this, from Dublin, Ohio, to uh, Canton, Ohio, and they're actually doing quite well. Um, one of the things that are in this pamphlet, which is going to be readily available for any resident to view for the next 30 days before we actually vote if we're going to approve this or not, so you guys can have a chance to look it over, um, put your two cents in, ask questions on it. Our hopes is that this brings in more businesses. Um, those who haven't been in that area know that there is a couple empty lots. So with this, we're hoping this actually is more of a, you know, kind of a spotlight for businesses to come in, uh, more events, you know, Craig Estate and Lou, Cracker Barrel, um, Holly Davidson, and the Biker Brew House. They already do a phenomenal amount of events, and they contribute to this community. So it kind of would assist them with having to not have to go every single time they have an event and have to get the outdoor liquor license. Um, so if anyone has any questions, we won't have to answer it after the meeting, but this is just a, I guess you say a step. It has to be presented officially. We'll put it in the paper for about 30 days, at which time we'll vote on it. If approved, it gets sent to the Board of uh, Liquor Control, and then they'll give it its blessing, hopefully, and then we can move forward. So it doesn't require a vote at this time. Okay. Do we, yeah, we don't need a motion for that. It's just a present. It's just, well, we're just accepting it as this correspondence. You know, the, the, the acceptance of uh, Lori's report is just for that. Okay, this time there's no new business. I will um, at this time take um, public response. Anybody on camera that would like to come up and speak? Yes, sir. You can go ahead up and state your name and address, please. <coughs> 
My name is Bob Osner. This is my, my wife, Verna. A few months ago, we were here and concerned about a feed tree that uh, was on Regal Drive. And we talked to Mike at the time after the meeting. Uh, it was leaning very badly, and they checked it out. And it's cut down now, and we really appreciate that because it could have been catastrophic. It would have fallen on a car or taken a wire down to one into uh, Fairview Heights. And I just want to, we just want to thank the trustees, the road department, the police department, whoever was responsible for that, getting it done. And we really appreciate it. And we uh, back almost everything you guys can say. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that. Anyone else on camera? Oh, sorry. Are you good? You're good? <laughs> oh. I'm Bill Adams, uh, 4286 Maureen Drive. Um, I just want to let folks know I talked with Jessica over at the Senior Center and we're going to be doing a health fair on November 1st. Um, and I'll give you all a flyer from 11.30 to 1. And we have 15 vendors including uh, Mercy Health and Direction Home, which is Agency on Aging. So that's a Wednesday, November 1st, 1130 to 1. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you for the information. Okay. Sorry, you're just the first game. Thank you. 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 Appreciate that. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm once again the fire levy committee, and I want to remind you that in just 15 days there's a very important election coming up that directly affects your Austin Top Fire Department. Uh, if you'd like to show your support, we still have signs available, and uh, after this, uh, Assistant Chief uh, Scherzer has some flyers I'm going to set out for everybody. Uh, they have some really pertinent information, and they may be answer some questions. We've also been sharing some valuable information on our Austin Top Fire Levy Facebook page, including stats. Insights from Chief Frost and Scherzer, and I encourage you all to follow it and take a look at it. Keep out for some heartfelt testimonials that have been coming out from these from some individuals that experienced um, the medical side of the Austin Fire Department and the time of crisis. Uh, last time I spoke with you, I mentioned a few stats, uh, and trust me, as a father of two, I understand times are tough and the cost of living is continuously rising. Uh, I've seen even something as simple as half a meal has become more expensive over the past five years, and. Imagine the increase in the cost of emergency gear. Um, a fire coat that used to cost $900 a decade ago is now nearly $2,000. Boots that were $190 in 2012 are now $450. These are just two small items um, that they are paying for that have more than doubled in cost. So and there's, I mean, I'm sure the chief or assistant chief can explain there's hundreds of thousands of other items that they're purchasing that have nearly tripled in cost. So these are just a couple of examples of the rising costs. So once more, I urge you to keep the Austin Hub Fire Department in mind when you cast your ballot for a couple weeks. By supporting them, you're helping ensure that we continue to receive the exceptional service and care we've all come to rely on. Thank you, and I'll have those flyers on the desk after the meeting. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else on camera that would like to speak to us tonight? How about off camera? Anyone off camera? Okay, at this time I would see if Trustee and my doctor would like to say anything. First, first comment. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. First of all, I'd like to uh, congratulate Lori and um, Amy and Roxanne who work uh, in the accounting and payroll office for the uh, recent audit that covered uh, 21 and 22. Uh, I don't know if they've released it yet. Um, it wasn't perfect, but there was there was no there was no uh, big mistakes. And you have to understand that these two years would have been more difficult than normal because we have been dealing with both CARES and ARC money from the federal government, and they have their own rules. Uh, and, and as far as those uh, monies go, uh, I think we, we were pretty much maybe almost perfect. But anyway, it was a good audit made more difficult by the CARES and our money from the federal government. So I want to congratulate uh, Lori 
along with Amy and Roxanne who work in the office. And I also want to congratulate the uh, department heads and the clerical uh, people that work with them who also are part of uh, the process of, of making sure our accounting gets this done correctly. Along those lines, I want to talk just briefly about uh, what I learned about Austin Town in comparison to other townships in all my years here. I could, Austin Town is the 14th largest township as far as population in the state of Ohio. Uh, I remember one email early on getting an email and it was from either a deputy administrator, township administrator or an assistant township administrator. And I either recognized the township as one of the larger ones, larger than us, or I went and looked it up. Well, I know I went and looked it up because I was interested in, wow, I wonder what they do that they need both a township administrator and a deputy administrator. And I also assumed that they probably had a police chief, a fire chief, and a, and, and a road superintendent. Uh, I came to find that they did less than we did. Yes, they, they had more people, they probably had they had more money, so they probably had more uh, transactions than let's say we do. But they didn't have more employees because I can tell you that they didn't have a police department. They contracted with, with the sheriff's department. And it's nice to live, I guess, in a community where you can get away with contracting with the sheriff's department for police protection, but that uh, took a, a level of a burden off of uh, the township, off the administrator, off the uh, township trustees. In any event, I just want to uh, let people know they can go look it up. Uh, I bet the ranch on it that you're not going to find any township that is um, around our size that has been as lean as Austin Town Township in the administrative uh, office, uh, in the road department. Like I said, we have two people that, that help Lori do um, the accounting and payroll for this township. I can tell you every other township that I looked at that's lar larger than us about our size, they got three, four, and more people. Um, some of them even not only have administrator, deputy administrator, road superintendent, but they have a foreman or two foreman and they're not working for me. We've got foremen, our foremen work. They don't, they're not non-working strictly uh, supervisors. Uh, they're working for it. So I just want to let the, the, the residents of Austin Town know that over the years, I found one thing that was always consistent with the Board of Trustees, and that was they did their level best to run this township administratively as lean as they could so that they could save general fund money, which pays for um, Lori and, 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 and her staff. So that that money was available if the police department needed it, if the fire department needed it, uh, if we needed it uh, for resurfacing. So um, again, I just, I, just, I just think that we get things done here with probably less people than any other township you want to compare to us. And like I say, up at the ranch, if anybody can show me uh, that I'm wrong and, and anywhere in the state of Ohio. keyboard warriors out there that will say certain things are done wrong but they will not specify what it is. Our township is 100% open. If anyone wants to see anything, we legally have to show it to you. So our budget, our funds, you name it, our revenue, our expense, anything, everything down to 
a tenth of a penny is public knowledge. Um, I understand that our books are kind of confusing, but Lori, myself, uh, Trustee Beavers, and Trustee Attorney Dockery, and even our administrator, be more than happy to make ourselves available to explain it to you so that way you understand. Um, obviously, we are one is open, so I challenge anyone that thinks otherwise to sit down with us and be more than happy to go over with a fine tooth comb with you to show how thin uh, we have stretched things. Um, so, on a good note, the trunk or treat is coming up this Sunday. So if you have any kids, um, by all means, bring them down. It'll be this Sunday at our park from 3.30 to 5.30. Um, we have, believe it or not, I thought we would stop at 24, but we now have 26 uh, participants, 27, I'm sorry, 27. I remember that on that one. Uh, which is about 15 more than we had last year. So last year we had about, what was it, 1,012 children that came by. People were running out of candy. So <laughs> uh, it's definitely an event to remember. We'll have some extra curricular activities for the kids. Nothing too fancy, some, some coloring. We'll have a little special potion making stage, basically vinegar and baking soda. The kids love it. It'll be fun. It'll be a good time. Get out. It's a safe environment for our kids to go out there and do some trick-or-treating, see some uh, costumes. I know I'll dress up. Marco, I'm sure, probably will dress up again. I don't know if we can force our attorney doctor to come out and dress up. <laughs> Some people say I don't need to dress up. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good time, so I encourage everyone to come out. Um, it's always good. So if you guys want to participate, obviously I'll take uh, trunks in a minute. Um, this is the park. We have more than enough space. <coughs> With that being said, I want to also thank uh, State Representative uh, Lauren McNally. Um, she is not our representative. RAC Alvin Chorley is our representative, but if those who follow the state legislator will see that the lines actually were changed. So this coming election next year, Lori McNally will have all of Austin down. So I want to appreciate her and myself and Monica taking up um, getting initiative, building that rapport with her so that way when we come knocking on the, uh, the state's door for funds, she knows who we are and we will be loud and very clear on how much money to all of our askings and our hands will be permanently out. Uh, if anything, we'll probably take the door off our office. <laughs> there so, much. Um, so I want to thank her for coming out and taking the time of the day with that. Um, Denny's is open finally. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 After more than five. You said you were going to let me say that. Thank you. <laughs> 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 okay, well, we'll talk more. Sorry. I thought you said that James Cranny. I'm sorry. Uh, but it's been like four or five years since it's been open. Yeah, we were talking about that. It's been okay. five years, I think. Yeah. So it's glad to see that that business, you know, the corporation one is still in there. Um, other than that, sorry. I thought we'd, you know, have that plan. I would try not to. You can take what we're all going to talk about. But. Well, you can see the little man scrolling arrested in us. Uh, he's, 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 so, he's so excited. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I appreciate it. I mean, thank you guys. He really likes it. Uh, my wife's at work still. She's stuck in surgery. So, uh, I mean, he's a good kid. He'll probably have to sign some legislation or something later on. Free candy on Friday or something. Yeah. So if he, he's really interested. <laughs> well, I had to welcome Denny's, day. but everybody wants to welcome Denny's, and of course we are always happy to see new business in the town, and it was sad to see that building empty for so long, and I'm happy that it's still at this time. Also, we're also sorry to see J.C. Penney's leave, but I look forward to new businesses coming into the plaza, so I'm kind of excited about that also. Um, Kids Drama Club has a place this weekend, if anybody doesn't know, and it's Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. Thursday it's at 7, Saturday it's at 7, and Sunday it's at 3. And the name of the play is An Absolute True Story Told by a Bunch of Lying Liars. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the person that's in, one of the, one of the girls that are in the play um, works for me, and she's the main character, and she spent a lot of time, I wonder like how much time these these um, young adults put into these drama, you know, these drama clubs, and um, it would be nice if we show their support. Um, where there's a fall sports and pep rally bonfire this Thursday, October 26th at 7 p.m. at the 9-11 Memorial Park to celebrate the fall sports. There will be pop and chips and hot dogs, and um, the entry is just to do some spare change if you have it or for the outreach or canned goods for their pantry. So that with, with being said, I will close it with a motion to recess to executive session.
for the following so the second board. Yes. 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 Yes.